Hello, hello, hello. If you can see me well and hear me well, be polite and just say hello, good night, good morning, wherever you're watching from. I want you to greet me in the comment section. Tell me where you're watching from and share this broadcast. I believe God has something that he wants to say to encourage his people today. Come on in and say hello. I see all of your beautiful faces. I see you. Kristen, good morning. Anya, good morning. Ashley, good morning. Gathered Crown, I see y'all on Instagram. Pastor Durant, uh, Durant good morning. Uh, good morning to Chandra. Good morning, Donna, on YouTube. I want everybody to click that share button. I have a prophetic word for your week. And I want to take some time to really dive into it with you. So I want you to click that broadcast share button. I want you to share it with at least two people. I believe that there's going to be some uh, some very, very in, important things that we need to discuss today. I love Disciples of Jesus Ministry in Thomasville, Georgia. I see y'all on Instagram. I see y'all on Facebook. I see y'all on YouTube. Hello, hello, hello. I need you to click that share button. Uh, while we had 22 people join our hub yesterday, 22 new partners that committed to uh, being a part of the hub, serving, sewing, um, uh, uh, connecting to family. It's really exciting the times that we are in. Um, God has been so good to us and moving up for us in such an amazing way. Uh, this Coming Resurrection Sunday on April 31st, we are hosting our very first baptism service. It's uh, uh, March 31st at 3 p.m. We are hosting our very first baptism service. So if you are in the DFW area and you're interested in connecting to a, uh, a, a church, a community, you need that. We are baptizing. You can join us every Sunday. We've moved to 2939 Sunnyvale Street in Dallas, Texas. You can join us every Sunday um, at 3 p.m. So we want to see your face in the place. Yesterday, we started a new series called Mindsets. We taught on mental warfare. And today's teaching is going to go in line with that, I believe that there is a growing number of people who need to inspect the condition of their souls. This is my prophetic word for you this week. I was praying this morning and I was laying in the bed asking God how he wanted me to encourage his people today. I've not been live on Mondays like I normally have, but I, I began to pray and ask him, how he wanted me to encourage his people, because I realized that there's so much going on in the world. There's so many distractions. There's so many people who are under attack in their souls, their minds, their wills, and their emotions. And I really felt like it was necessary for me this morning for, for me to teach on soul health. Everybody type soul health, soul health. It's amazing to me that we will go to the doctor for our bodies. We will go to the dentist for our teeth. We will go to the optometrist for our eyes. We will go to the podiatrist for our feet. But when it comes to the condition of our soul, the health of our soul, the health of our soul, when it comes to it, we often uh, 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 don't consider the soul. We often don't take time to evaluate the health of the health of our soul and, and look at what's going on on the inside of our minds, our will, and our emotion. I think this week you need to take some intentional time to investigate what's going on in your soul. Here's why. Number one, the enemy is on a never-ending 
campaign to twist your soul and to pervert your perspective. I know you have been saved for many years, but you still need deliverance. You still need breakthrough. Everybody type breakthrough. You need breakthrough. I'm not going to be with you long, but I, I, I need you to really uh, uh, take a moment to digest and dissect what's going on in your soul. I need you to dissect what's going on in your soul. All right. Because here's the truth. The enemy never stops trying to twist your perspective. He wants to dampen your soul. He wants to affect your soul, your mind, your will and emotions, because he wants to dampen what's going on in your spirit. This is why you struggle to pray. This is why fasting never comes up on your mind. This is why you have no interest in reading the word. This is why you're just interested in feeding your soul entertainment from Netflix and Hulu. And you're only interested in gossip and messy, messy conversations. No, it's a sign that your soul needs to be made whole. You need deliverance. You need breakthrough. I prophesied last week at the end of February, and I told you that March is going to be a time that you need to be sharp. Everybody type B sharp. Everybody type it. Share this broadcast with somebody who needs to be sharp. I told you that March was going to be a time where you needed to be sharp. It was going to be a time of the sharpening of the Lord. I told you it was going to be a time where the Lord shaped you. And I told you he was going to shave some things down. And I told you he was going to straighten some things out. It's because he needs you to be sharp. But the main area that you need to be sharp in, the thing that God is looking to sharpen, to shave down, to straighten out, to shape up, is the soul. God is concerned about your soul. He's concerned about what's going on in your mind, what's going on in your will, what's going on in your emotions. You need to be sharp in your soul. Just type it, be sharp. Be sharp. So I was praying and I, I, I really felt ne necessary for us to really investigate the soul. What's going on in your mind, your will, and your emotions that are keeping you dull? A dull soul needs deliverance. What does it mean? What do I mean dull? I mean, you struggle to focus. You have no sense of direction for your life. You live like a zombie. You have no inspiration, no creativity. You have no willingness, no awareness to do something new. It's like you live in a cycle of blah. If I'm talking to you, it sounds like you need deliverance. And that's okay. That's okay. Let me explain what I say when I mean deliverance. I don't mean you just need to lay at the altar at somebody's church and scream. No, you need a one-on-one. -on -one. Often, you need a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, session to uh, uh, really detox the soul. You need a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, time where someone can counsel you through different chambers in your soul, walk you through uh, uh, um, the pains of your past. I'm going to give you 10 signs that you need a sharp soul, 10 signs that, of, that you need deliverance. Everybody type 10 signs, 10 signs that you need a soul detox. Share this with somebody. It's okay to need deliverance. We've made deliverance a bad thing. We've made deliverance about uh, oh, oh, you're you're full of demons and oh, you 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 you're full of this and you're full of that. No, it's really about what you need to be filled with. Deliverance is about what's empty. The enemy wants to keep you on empty, so that he can fill you with his perspective. I'm going to give you ten signs that you need deliverance. Ten signs that you need deliverance. You can find all of these. Uh, uh, you can find the keys to breakthrough for all of these in uh, uh, my book. I wrote a book on deliverance called The Finger of God. You can find you can find it on Amazon. I'm going to give you 10 signs that you need deliverance. I know you were expecting, oh, the, the, the words about the stock market crashing. 
this is the problem. We want to receive prophetic words about exposure about everybody else, but we don't want to expose what's going on in us. We really don't want to deal with uh, uh, reverting the version of us that we created back to the version that God intended. Because some of you are living a life that God never designed. Some of you are working a job that God never intended for you to work. It's because you have got out of sync with him. You came out of agreement with him and God needs you to be in alignment with him. Ten signs that you need deliverance. Number one, and I got to go. Number one, you are comfortable with unrepentant sin. You are comfortable with sin. Everybody type comfortable with sin. Number one, you are comfortable with sin. The first sign that you have a dull soul, you are numb in your heart. Your convictions have been seared, the scripture says, with a hot iron. You have, you are comfortable with sin. You are comfortable in fornication. You are comfortable stealing and lying on your taxes. You are comfortable with uh, 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 with obesity. You are comfortable with uh, 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 your mental state. You are comfortable with what's going on that is in direct opposition. I know that may have been offensive, but, but the truth is obesity is a sin. It's a sign of gluttony. It's a sign that you don't have discipline in your diet. I know we love to talk about deliverance from demons, but we also need to talk about deliverance in diet and debt. Some of you are in sin because you don't deal with your debt. You owe people. I can talk about it. I can talk about being delivered, be, being delivered from it because I was a person who had a 390 credit score and the Lord gave me the tools to pull myself out of debt into a place of, of financial freedom. Number one, you live very comfortably in sin. You live in fornication. You're comfortable lying. There's no conviction for sin. It's a sign that you need deliverance. <clears throat> Number two, you battle with compulsive behaviors. Compulsive thinking, compulsive buying, compulsive. Some of you get in relationships out of compulsion. You're so afraid to be alone. Number two, the sign that you are uh, number two sign that you need deliverance. The second sign is that you battle with compulsion. You have compulsion, compulsive behaviors that you cannot explain. It's a sign that you need deliverance. If I ever hit you, it's OK. Just say I need deliverance. Number three. You battle with emotional instability. You deal with high highs and low lows. One day you're happy, the next day you're sad. Now, number three could also be a sign that you need therapy and it could be a sign that you need medication. There may be a chemical imbalance. You'll take medicine for a headache, but you won't take medicine for your brain. It's okay. If you need to take your medicine, emotional instability is a sign that you need deliverance. The enemy wants to control your perspective and influence your emotions so he can set the agenda for your life. Somebody said already, you hit me, I need deliverance. It's okay. Get the deliverance that you need. Number four, a major door. I need you to consider this this week and take inventory of your soul this week. How has the enemy been working? What has he been doing? There's no condemnation here. I'm giving you the keys to freedom. You need to identify what's going on in your soul so that you can walk in breakthrough. 
Number four, if you have been the victim of any type of abuse and you've not dealt with that abuse, it is a very strong possibility that you need deliverance. If you were the a victim of sexual abuse, molestation, rape, if you were the victim of grooming, if you were the victim of emotional abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, you were the, now many of you on here, I'm, I know I'm going to hit it here. Some of you need deliverance because you were the victim of spiritual abuse. Everybody type spiritual abuse. Spiritual abuse. Spiritual abuse. Any type of abuse can cause your soul to be negatively impacted. An impact on the soul is called trauma. It leaves a bruise. Trauma is the door that the enemy uses to gain influence. Spiritual abuse looks like you had a spiritual mother or spiritual father. Spiritual mother, spiritual father, pastor, leader, church environment that mishandled you, that used you and threw you away, that rejected you. If you are the victim of spiritual abuse, it could be a very strong sign that you need deliverance and it's okay. Number five, a sign that you need deliverance. I feel breakthrough happening already on here, man. Number five. Now, now let me back up to number back to spiritual abuse. You are not going to find deliverance from abuse alone. I know that you're trying to protect yourself from experiencing the hurt and pain that you experienced at the hand of abusers. But the way to find deliverance from abuse is to surround yourself with accountability. Everybody type accountability. Accountability. You need accountability. That means if you experience spiritual abuse, the answer is not staying away from the church. Some of you have not been a part of a Christian community in years. It's a sign that you are struggling and you probably need some deliverance. You ain't been back to church since COVID. That was four years ago now. My God. You need a Christian community. Number five. Number five. You battle with addiction. Now, when we think of addiction, we often think our minds already automatically go to substance abuse like alcohol or cocaine or nicotine. We start thinking and we start thinking, oh, I don't need deliverance because I don't battle with addiction. Some of you are addicted to applause. You battle with. You battle with. Addiction to food, addiction to caffeine, addiction to chocolate. You battle with what any form of addiction. If you battle with compulsive behavior and you are uh, uh, enslaved to something, it's a sign of addiction. You can't go one day you get stressed out and you need a hit of your addiction. Some people are addicted to sex. Addicted to pornography. Addicted to bread and sweets. The food industry in America creates addicts. 
This is why you love the breads and you love the rices. I'm talking about myself. You love because these foods are saturated with salt, sugar, and oil. These snacks are oh so good because they trigger a response in your brain. I'm talking physically. That brings you a false sense of comfort and slowly deteriorates your body. It's addiction. Some of you are addicted to food. Bread, sugar, snacks, oil, salts, sweets. If you deal with addiction, I had a lady sit in front of me and I laughed at her before I really knew it was serious. She said, I'm addicted to chocolate. And I laughed. Oh, oh no, you're serious. It's okay. You may need deliverance. Some of you will have better physical health if you get deliverance in your soul. All right. Number six. I hope I'm helping you. Number six. If you struggle to love yourself, be kind to yourself, or see yourself the right way, it could be a sign that you need deliverance. It could be a sign that you need deliverance. If you struggle to see yourself the way God sees you, you struggle with your self-image, you're self-critical, you self-sabotage, you hate yourself, you don't give yourself grace. If you struggle to be kind to yourself, it could be a sign that you need deliverance. Actually, it's not could be. It is definitely a sign that you need deliverance. I've not seen so many tongue-talking believers that hate themselves in my life. Do you know the greatest deliverance that you'll find is when you follow the commandment that Jesus gave the Pharisees? The Pharisees asked them, what's the greatest commandment? He said, love your neighbor, love the Lord with all your heart, and then love the, your neighbor as you love yourself. As you love yourself means that self becomes a priority. You need deliverance if you put everybody else in front of you. If you take care of yourself last, if you give everybody else a compliment, but you can't ever look in your mirror and give yourself a positive affirmation. It's a sign that you need deliverance. You may need to sit down with a deliverance minister and go through some deliverance. I go through deliverance. You sit, you need to sit down with somebody and work through those soul issues. You are hard on yourself because the enemy's plan works best on discouraged people. And if you don't have sense and strength enough to do like David did and encourage yourself in the Lord, it may be a sign that your soul is weak and you need deliverance. Being critical on yourself is a sign that you need deliverance. Shame. You're so easily shamed, embarrassed. Being easily embarrassed is it's so, it's so interesting. The root of shame is pride. Type that. The root of shame is pride. If you are easily embarrassed, if you are always ashamed, if you are easily offended, if someone gives you any type of criticism, it's probably because you deal with pride. Pride is a tool of self-hate. When you battle with pride, you're always criticizing yourself. I know people who deal with self-criticism heavily because they always criticize everyone else. They don't give anybody else any grace. And I, I, I confront them. I say, you know what? You hard on everybody else because you truthfully, you're hardest on yourself. 
If you battle with shame and embarrassment, it means that you need to deal with what's going on in your ego and submit to the counsel of the Lord's will. If you find if I'm 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 only on point six, I got four more to go. If I've hit your if I've come down your lane already, just type, just type, I need deliverance. It's okay. Just type, I need deliverance. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for some deliverance to break out on this live today. It doesn't take a lot. You can get what you need. Number seven. If I hit your, if I came down your row already, it's okay. I got, I got a little more to go. Number seven, you struggle with secrets. Everybody type secrets. And let me explain this. Secrets are the brewing pot for sin. A person who is holding on to a lot of secrets is often a very tormented person. The scripture says it like this. Confess your faults one to another, pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail much or very effective. The enemy keeps a lot of us from a place of effectiveness in prayer because we've not taken the time to confess secrets. Secrets, and let me say this, God does not deal in secrets. He deals in mystery, but he doesn't deal in secrets. Secrets are something that are locked away. They sh they are never to be revealed. You don't tell anybody. You don't want anybody to know out of shame, embarrassment, pride. Uh, but, but what happens is secrets fester. They should never be revealed. God doesn't deal in secrets, but he does deal in mysteries. Secrets are to never be revealed. Mysteries, God desires for mysteries to be discovered. He wants to reveal revelation to you, but he wants you to position yourself to receive it. How do you position yourself? By sharpening your soul, submitting to the counsel of his will. If you've got secrets, not only secrets of what you've done, but some of you need to confess your secrets to somebody of the things that was done to you. I was doing deliverance on a young man. And we just couldn't seem to get anywhere. We had gone through all of the prayers of breaking legal ground and we had gone through all of the things. And uh, I began to pray and I began to ask the Lord how to uh, uh, deal with this, how to break uh, through. And the Lord began to give me a vision and I saw a big wall, tall wall. And behind, uh, on the wall, I saw secrets. And so I came out of that vision and I began to ask him, I said, hey, is there anything that you are ashamed of telling? Are you have, do you have any secrets? And he began to cry and he began to tell his secrets and he began to tell the things that he battled with internally. And as he began to confess those things, as he began to share those things, breakthrough began to happen. And he began to break out of years of trauma and years of abuse and deliverance happened in his life, all because he was he made himself tell the secret. What secret are you holding that's making you sick? Number eight, you need deliverance. If you struggle to rest, everybody type rest. You can't find rest. You can't find peace. You are always in a place of torment. You are, you, you battle with nightmares regularly. You can't seem to be settled in any environment. You get on a job and you leave it because you are tormented. You get in a church and you leave it because you're dealing with torment. Consistently uh, 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 a sign that you struggle to rest is a consistent sign that you need deliverance. Hey, Savannah.
It's a sign that you need deliverance. I hope I'm helping somebody. It's a sign that you need deliverance. You struggle with rest. You battle with insomnia. You deal with night terrors, night terrors, nightmares. You deal with, uh, 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 you, you, you can't seem to be settled anywhere. You don't feel safe. You don't feel seen. You don't feel understood. It's a sign that you need deliverance. Number nine, a telltale sign. You want to really find out the areas in your soul that need breakthrough? Get in relationship. A sign that you need deliverance is that all of your relationships suffer. If you're a person that don't have a good relationship with anybody, you got beef with your mama, you got beef with your sisters, you got beef with pastors, you, you got beef with, with your, your boss, your co-workers, it, you got some type of issue with everyone, all of your relationships are on uh, are on thin ice, it's a sign that you need deliverance because your soul is the way that you relate to everyone. Your soul is the way that you connect. I know I've made some people uncomfortable. It's okay. You need deliverance. You need deliverance. You need deliverance. It's okay. If your relationships are consistently, and let me say this, not only do you struggle in relationships, but you battle with soul ties and trauma bonds. Some of you are in relationships with people who you know God does not want you to be in relationship with. You do this back and forth over years. You have a soul tie. I know there's some teachings out here that tell you soul ties ain't real. I'm sorry to tell you they are. And some of the spirituals, uh, some of the worst spiritual infestations I have seen have been, uh, uh, have happened through soul ties with wicked people. When your relationships are all over the place. It's a sign that you need deliverance. Last one, number 10. And I'm going to pray for you and, and I'm going to prophesy to a few of you. Number 10, a major sign that you need deliverance is that you struggle to forgive. Unforgiveness is the enemy's favorite place to hide. Everybody type unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is his favorite place to hide because he's the unforgiven one. When we mess up, we get to sing songs of redemption. When he messed up, he had to be cast out of heaven. I'm talking about, this is why I hate Facebook. I'm talking about deliverance. And I guess uh, Facebook flagged my post because I, I started talking about abuse and addiction. I don't know. This is a liberal world. Unforgiveness is the main sign that you need deliverance. Unforgiveness is the enemy's favorite place to hide. This is why I've created my own app and my own community that I go live regularly there. Because anytime I do teachings like this, I receive some type of resistance from Facebook. I was wondering why we had such a, a, a big drop and it's because Facebook literally blocked my video. I've not seen anything on here worthy of being blocked. Sick of Facebook. 
Um, unforgiveness, if you struggle to forgive, forgiveness, forgiveness, unforgiveness is the enemy's favorite place to hide because that's the place he's familiar with. That's the place he's most familiar with. He's familiar with unforgiveness because he is the unforgiven one. So when you have offense with people and you won't reconcile, when you won't apologize, when you won't deal with, when you won't deal with what's going on, the beef that you have with somebody, you you need deliverance. Forgiveness is not a feeling, it's a discipline. It's a decision. You may not ever feel like forgiving, but it's necessary for your soul to be made whole. You need deliverance. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for your sons and your daughters. I thank you that everywhere where the plan of the enemy has been to twist and suppress and oppress and depress them in the area of their soul. I thank you that that plan and that plot has been reversed. You said, Jesus, that you came, that the works of darkness would be destroyed. For this reason, the son of man was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of darkness. I thank you, Jesus, that today your delivering power and your your strength, your wind, that you stand as Jehovah Gabor and you bring deliverance to us. You stand as the Lord who heals, who delivers and breaks free. You break free. And I thank you that you bring us into breakthrough, into transformation and into change. Lord, I pray now by your strong name, Jesus, that you would begin to move in the lives of each and every person on here crying out for deliverance, crying out for breakthrough crying out for transformation, crying out for change. I pray that you would begin to break them into their next level. I pray that you would be uh, you would be the Lord of breakthrough over their lives. Every glass ceiling, every iron membrane, every dam, every blockage in the realm of the spirit that would keep them from the flow of God for their lives. I decree and declare that they would receive breakthrough, inner healing, and deliverance in Jesus' name. If you receive deliverance, just type, I receive. Just type, I receive. Two things I want to tell you. Well, first, I've seen some of you already. If you're interested in sowing, this word was a blessing to you. I want you to sow. I want you to sow. I want you to sow. Your, let your seed be a sign that you believe God for a breakthrough. This is a breakthrough seed. This is a breakthrough seed. That's right. This is a breakthrough seed. I need everybody to sow a breakthrough seed. So however God leads you. I don't have a number for you. I don't have an amount for you. I just want you to sow as you're led. Sow as you're led. Sow as you're led. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to sow and come back. Pamela Perez, I really feel like the Lord is getting ready to bring an end to some areas that the enemy wants to torment you. I think the Lord is getting ready to really bring you into an understanding of your identity like never before. God's getting ready to make sense of the warfare and he's getting ready to bring an end to every place in your life where the enemies try to make you second guess yourself. God is getting ready to pour out confidence and courage on you like never before. He's getting ready to give you clarity about everything that you've been praying for. Get ready to experience freedom on another level. On Instagram, Songbird Olu. I really feel like God is getting ready to unlock some secrets and mysteries that uh, there's some mysteries. There's some things you've been praying for, some answers you've been seeking him for. There's been some things that you wanted to know, and there have been some things that you've needed some answers about. And the Lord says, I'm getting ready to give you the answers you've been praying for. 
I see you writing in the realm of the spirit. I see you writing. And the Lord says, I'm getting ready to breathe upon your writings. I'm getting ready to breathe upon what you do. And you're going to find deliverance as you write. I don't know this. I don't know why. But you're getting ready to find deliverance and experience deliverance as you write. Your writings, as you express yourself, as you express yourself, God is getting ready to bring you into complete deliverance. Write, write, and you're going to write yourself into a new place. You're going to write yourself into a new place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank every one of you who has sown those of you who are partnering with what we're doing, um, thank you for your seed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sierra Walls, Sierra Walls, I keep seeing your name and I really feel like God is getting uh, uh, getting you ready for a level of leadership. I know it may seem before time that before you're ready, the Lord's getting ready, getting you ready for a level of leadership. And I want you to just say yes to the Lord. God's getting ready to really begin to show you the gifts that you carry and, and outline the, the, uh, the, the, the power that's really on the inside of you. So I need you to just begin to accept that walk in that and know that it is the leading of the Lord. There are going to be some people who are intimidated by how he designed you and how he moves you, but don't hold back. God is looking for more. I want to challenge each of you to, to grab a seed. Don't leave this live. It's a breakthrough seed. It's a breakthrough seed. Thank you, Jaleesa Brooks. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Alexis Marie. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Tracy. Tracy, um, I really feel Tracy Bowen. I saw your name as you sold. And I really feel that the hand of the Lord is getting ready to accelerate you. Accelerations all over you. God's going to bring you into a place of breakthrough and peace. Like never before. It's going to be accelerated. It's, it's not going to take a long time. Uh, thank you, um, Sharice Jones. Thank you, Monica Berry. Thank you, Stephen Pierce. Thank you, Charity White. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've been sowing $56 seeds. This is a, a, a net-breaking seed. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Ashley Harding. She just sold a deliverance seed. Man, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some people are sowing for their breakthrough. People are sowing not to receive it, but they're sowing because they believe it. If you believe, I need you to grab a seed. I prophesy over every person that's sowing every area where they've experienced blockages and bondages and, and every area where they've received uh, uh, hindrances and, and the plan of the enemy has been working to keep them from moving into what they've been called to everywhere where their businesses have been stifled. I decree, I declare breakthrough, 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 not only in their soul, but father, as you set them free in their soul, I pray that you would do something new in their finances. I need you to, I need you, Lord, to begin to move, show, give them strategy, give them insight, give them understanding, give them clarity about what you've called them to do in Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. I thank you for the net breaking situation. See, you said in your word in Jane, uh, in 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 uh, uh, in Luke five and six, Lord, you said their nets broke. I thank you for a net breaking seed. I thank you for a net breaking seed that as they sow and partner, that their families would receive breakthrough. Not oh hallelujah ah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you that this seed would begin to break cycles, cycles of generational curses, cycles of, of poverty and lack, cycles of bondages. I thank you, Lord, that this seed will bring transformation in their lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
we've been sowing that 50 according to that Luke 5 and 6, and their nets break. This is your net breaking seed. $56 if you just need a place to sow, you need a, you need uh, to, to place your faith somewhere. You can sow that. I need everybody to sow something. Um, Father, I thank you. Um, Morgan, I don't know why I just saw this, but Morgan, I really feel like God's getting ready to accelerate your life again. Uh, I know you just received something recently that was a surprise, but I really feel like another surprise is getting ready to hit you. And it's really going to change the state of your whole life. I need you to be ready to move into what God has said uh, and, and, and move in obedience. I need everybody to grab a seed. It's going to happen again. I released that over many of you. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Everybody just type, do it again, Lord. Just type, do it again, Lord. I have a special announcement for my students. If you are a student of Cultivate University, just type see you in the comment section. See you. See you. In the comment section, I have a special announcement for you. Where are my students at? I love it. If you are a CU student, you've heard this teaching and you've recognized that there are some areas that you need deliverance. I am excited to announce the official opening of one of the areas in our student services department. I have trained and partnered with deliverance ministers all over this country. And today, if you're a CU student and you've identified that you need a one-on-one -on -one deliverance session, you can go to your student portal right now and you can sign up and schedule your one-on-one -on -one session. How exciting. I started my ministry off in deliverance. I started I started my ministry off. Uh, uh, people were traveling to me from all over the country and they were uh, traveling to receive deliverance. And I was so blessed by it. I've created a team and a system for my students only. <clears throat> for my students only, because I realized that a lot of you were receiving information to 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 develop into your call but a lot of you were struggling in your development because of what was going on in your soul so i've set up a student services department and this is just the first one now you can become a student today for um you can get join join my my base tier it's only ten dollars a month you get access to weekly bible study you get access to my notes you get access to a, a library of pre-recorded courses, a monthly master class, a community of like-minded believers where Facebook won't block what I'm posting. And now as a student, you can get student services. If you want to be a student, there's a link at the bottom of the screen right now. You can become a student today by going to cultivateuniversity.org and signing up for your session. Sessions are limited because we, we only have three well-trained deliverance ministers right now. So you need to go ahead and put yourself on the calendar. They've put their availability up. This is an add-on. That means because you're a student, you get a discounted rate. And you also, because you're a student, you all are the only ones who get to get this. This is not offered to the public yet. This is, well, I don't know if it'll ever be offered to the public. It is only offered to my students at Cultivate University. You can become a student today. And when you become a student, Yes, I can. Father, I thank you for the Smith family. 
I thank you that every challenge, every area and uh, every area where the enemies really attacked her faith and made her afraid. I thank you, Jesus, that the power of fear and anxiety are broken off of her everywhere where the enemies attacked her life. I thank you that it's reversed now. I thank you, Jesus, that you bring her into a place of complete breakthrough, complete healing and complete transformation. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 I don't know what's going on, but I pray peace, blessing, and prosperity over the Smith family. If you're a student, if you're a student, you get to sign up for your one-on-one. -on -one. These are one-on-one -on -one sessions that you get to experience breakthrough. If you if you want to become a student or you just became a new student, just, just type new student, new student. If you're going to become a new student, you need this. It's, de it's development on demand. You get to see uh, 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 not only courses on the prophetic, on deliverance, but you also get access to courses that will help you become a marketplace leader. You need to join Cultivate University. All right. It's the student services department. And you get to identify roots. If you got if you got a, a, a if you got to uh, uh you got to deal with some things and you need some help. This is how you do it. It's one on one sessions. You get inner healing. You can break cycles, you can identify demonic root systems, and you can become a student today. It's only $10 a month to get access to all of these services. After, so we've rolled out our one-on-one -on -one deliverance sections. Next, we're going to be rolling out uh, business coaching sessions for those of you who are called to marketplace leadership. And we're also going to be rolling out uh, business coaching sessions, and we're also going to be rolling out um, sessions for uh, soul care, where you can get some wellness coaching, some co soul care uh, advice from some of our uh, more pastoral team leads. So please, please, please um, make your way to cultivateuniversity.org. If you say, you know what, I need deliverance regularly. I need to become a student so that I can get these ebooks and these resources. There's so much that comes with being a student at Cultivate University. You should join today. All right. I love y'all. And I hope you get the breakthrough that you need in your soul.